Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so at some point I'll make an example zero on improper integrals where I'll talk about the idea behind them. Uh, but with this example one and at least two more examples, uh, we're going to see in practice how to deal with improper integrals. So here, the task is to first show that this improper integral on the left is equal to this improper integral on the right. And then uh, we have to find the value. So to start, what we're going to do is write our improper integral as a limit. So we're going to replace uh, infinity here with b and send the limit as b goes to infinity. Yeah? You have to always rewrite your improper integral uh, involving a limit like I've done here. Now, next, I've uh, renamed our improper integral a. Since this here is equal to a, what I'm saying is this here is equal to a, right? Okay, cool. Uh, we'll need to abbreviate for it with a in a couple of places. So that substitution or um, calling it a will be useful. All right. Now, otherwise, looking at this integrand here, it's pretty obvious that what we have to do is integration by parts. And I have many uh, videos on integration by parts. But yeah, the formula is that the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v times du. Yeah. Okay, cool. So again, the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And so we have to look at this as being in the form u dv, which means we have to pick out a u and a dv. So our u is going to be sine x, um, and our dv therefore will have to be um, e to the minus x dx. So e to the minus x times dx being dv, and u being sine x will mean that du is cos x dx, and v is negative e to the minus x. And so since this is of the form u dv, the integral of u dv, we said it's going to equal uv minus the integral of v du. And that will mean that we have to write this. Now, uh, the limit is b goes to infinity. That's what's here. But uh, what's in parentheses is equal to this integral from 0 to b of e to the minus um, x, e to the minus x times sine x dx. Um, with the correct application of integration by parts. This here is equal to this, yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now this limit as b goes to infinity applies to this first part and then this integral part. Um, furthermore, e to the minus x, we can write as e to the positive x if we put it uh, in the denominator where the numerator is sine x, yeah? Or minus sine x is the numerator, yeah? Okay, so. Doing both, which is distributing the limit to apply both to this first part and second part. Hence, limit b goes to infinity here and limit b goes to infinity there. And then putting the e to the minus x downstairs like this. Um, this here is good. The correct next step, right? And so next what we're going to do is evaluate this first part uh, at b and at 0, right? Meaning uh, we plug in b and then uh, we plug in 0 and take the difference between plugging in b and plugging in 0, right? Take the difference of, of this quotient when b is plugged in and then 0 is plugged in. Um, OK, OK, so if you do that, then you could display this as being your next step. And um, since we're taking the difference and this quotient is minus, starts with a minus sign. That's why we've got a plus in the middle instead of a minus, right? Because it's minus minus, yeah? Okay, cool. Otherwise, what I've done is plugged in b and then plugged in zero, as, as I said I would. Now, sine of zero is zero, so this here drops out, right? So that means that we could write our integral a a little bit cleaned up like this. Now, um, we deal with this similar uh, analysis in uh, example three, uh, a much harder problem, but um, equally fun. But yeah, this, this limit is b goes to infinity of sine of b over e to the b is going to uh, be 0. And the reason is because, uh, remember, sine is bounded between negative 1 and 1. So the value of sine is between negative 1 and 1, even if b grows very large, right? Uh, sine will stay between negative 1 and 1. But e to the b, however, it's going to grow towards infinity, right? It's going to grow very rapidly um, towards uh, infinity, right? And so here, uh, sine of uh, b divided by e to the b will be dominated by e to the b when b goes to infinity. So uh, this is going to be like a, 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 f a finite value in the numerator divided by something that's growing without bound 
and therefore this is going to tend the fraction is going to tend to zero right as b goes to infinity so it's going to go to zero so basically i'm saying we could get rid of this uh now and get rid of it like with the limit as b goes to infinity because yeah as b goes to infinity this quotient goes to zero as i just said so that means that our integral a is this but wait um this here right is identical to this here right uh, the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus x cos x dx is the same as limit as b goes to infinity of 0 to b uh, e to the minus x cos x dx. So we're done with the first part of this question, which is showing that this improper integral is the same as this improper integral. We just showed it is, right? Because we started off with this, and right now we're at this. But we now have to find the value. So to find the value, we got to keep going. And we got to keep going. Uh, assuming that we started with this, right? Okay, we're not now like starting with this. We started with this, called it A, and right now A looks like this, which happens to be the right side here. But we continue. How do we continue? Integration by parts again, right? And um, so U is going to be cos x, and then um, dV is same old game, e to the minus x dx, so no wonder V is same as before, and du is... Well, yeah, okay, you get it. Um, all right, so integration by parts formula again uh, means picking up from here using integration by parts. A is going to be this. Now, same as before, like um, same, very similar steps, right? Um, so uh, what did I do here? I distributed the limit. Is that all I did? Yes. Uh, that's all I did. And... Um, why? Oh, yeah. I suppose I need to explain this highlighted minus sign here. And that's highlighted because, well, remember, the integration by parts formula would have had us write a minus sign here. And then it's the integral of v du in here, right? But v has a negative and du has a negative. So the negatives of v and du took care of each other. And that's why we had to keep the minus sign from the integration by parts formula right there. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Otherwise, here in this next step, all I've done is distribute uh, the limit as b goes to infinity, it looks like. that's Oh, that's different from the previous step. And then what's next? Well, I evaluated here. And uh, yes, in this part, I didn't put e to the minus x in the denominator of cos x. But uh, it's clear that I've showed that that's going to be the case here. And we talked about that detail earlier. So uh, no need to talk about more. And, uh, and here a cosine of 0 is 1 as is e to the 0 so this here is going to be 1 um, and let's go so there and then guess what we're going to do now we're going to say well first uh, something changed over here which is uh, limit as b goes to infinity 0 to b we went back to uh, being the integral from 0 to infinity which is uh, how we translated earlier so perfectly legitimate that we go we're able to um, use the reverse argument here and so that's good we can go in both directions and um, that's that because uh, I want I wanted to do that there to make it abundantly clear that this here is what this here is a it's our original integral right like yeah this here is a uh, but you know it was a here also right in any case, um, this here is a, and then uh, this limit as b goes to infinity of cosine of b over e to the b is going to go to zero for the same reason that I explained earlier when we had sine of b over e to the b. Um, it's going to go to zero because, well, um, cosine is bounded. It's between negative 1 and 1, and then e to the b uh, is going to uh, grow without bound. So the denominator will dominate the numerator as b goes towards infinity. So the whole thing is going to go to 0. And so what do we have? a equals, this is 0, plus 1, minus a. So a equals 1 minus a. That's what we have, right? We have a equals, well, yeah, I took an extra step, I guess, to rewrite a there. But yeah, you get it, you get it. But what we have is a equals 1 minus a. But that's saying 2a is equal to 1. And remember, this is 0 here. Yeah, a equals 1 minus a. So that means 2a is equal to 1, meaning a is equal to 1 half. So this integral is equal to 1 half. And therefore, this integral, this improper integral is equal to 1 half. And therefore, this improper integral is equal to 1 half. 
Um, example two is really fun. Example three is super fun, and I already made uh, the example three video. So um, if you haven't watched that, check it out. Uh, otherwise, keep watching. I hope you learned a lot. Take care.